What's up guys, Marcus here with Black Elvis. I'm here with Dan Staten, Elk Shape, Dan the Fitness Man. We're at his home base in Washington and on the table in front of us, we've got some items that Dan just scrounged around from his, from his man cave. cave. Yeah, man, man cave. cave. Um, and these items are all, they've got a theme to them. They're, they're all items that are super important that either don't get talked about often enough that you might forget when you're going out hunting or otherwise. So tell us what we've got in front of us and why we've got them here. You bet. And, and uh, viewers, please comment below because obviously the sky's the limit, but we can help each other create a kind of a checklist on this platform so that we all kind of can run through it, learn from each other and not leave anything behind. Um, have you ever left anything behind on a hunt that oh, you were oh, like, yeah. like what? Food one time, actually. Oh, that was really, that, that was really sucks. dumb. I it left was, boots. It was just a day hunt, so it didn't kill me, but. Oh, in the same time. But you were hungry. I was hungry, man. I don't know right. if I've ever done food, but I, like I said, boots. I, I went uh, on a hunt to, I went to hunt at Axis in Hawaii, and I got there, and it was a vacation with my wife, but I had a day set aside to hunt, and I'm looking around, and I didn't have boots, and I had to hunt Axis in lava rocks in <laughs> tennis shoes. Never again. Two is one on that for sure. So let's talk about some of these overlooked items or maybe you thought about, like I think everyone knows to bring a range finder. Uh, make sure that you change out the batteries before you leave. That's probably yeah. the main tip. Uh, if you're ultra paranoid because I am, I'm a paranoid bow hunter and I'm proud of that because bow hunting is all about failure, which I can't stand. So anything that I can mitigate, yep. Murphy's Law wise, anything under my control, I want to control. So I always have a backup rangefinder battery in my hunting pack. And it's a really quick adjustment on the this Razor 4000. Just pop that out, turn it, pull it out, throw your new one in, good to go. I always have a backup rangefinder battery. And I do carry an extra rangefinder, but I keep it at the truck. Yep. And uh, not everyone can afford to do that, but if you upgrade a rangefinder, don't sell it, yep. keep it as your backup, just like a backup bow. The next thing would be like, obviously, I think people know about four wheel drive, but if you don't, you might consider young bucks, especially, I know myself included, I never use trekkers. Now I'm old, I'm 40 and uh, I live off these. So I always have one trekker in my right hand, mm -hmm. bow in my left hand, if I'm doing steep terrain, uh, especially the descents versus more the ascents, not a big deal, but going downhill, falling on your bow, I've done it, I've broke stuff. I just like one trekker in hand, and I like that these fold up, these are the Crest Stones, they're pretty much indestructible, but the other one is in my pack at all times. And the reason why that is, is because when we, I plan on killing something, like I think we all should go out in the field, plan on killing something, and we'll talk about that in a second, but when I have uh, meat on my back, that's when I, I put the bow on the back, and I'm four wheel driving out. And it does make a huge difference in not only like resisting injury and mitigating falls, but it also you transfer energy and you're not expending as much energy as you yep. would without trekkers. And I'm usually hunting back to back. So something to think about is if I kill myself packing that elk out and I have another elk hunt three days later in a different state, uh, this will help me have more energy for that hunt. Gotcha. So, uh, Obviously, with trekking poles, you it's not uncommon to catch me using this as um, a bino stabilizer. So if I put my 10 by 42s right here, I can just have a little steadier picture. It makes a little bit of a difference. Uh, sometimes when we kill animals, we'll put orange flagging and we'll stab this in the ground at last blood. And then we're down crawling, looking for maybe it's a bad blood trail or just, uh -huh. just the kind of underbrush that doesn't show blood very well see on your hands and knees you're looking for the next track looking for the next blood you can kind of look back at your trekking pole sticking out with some flagging on it and you'll know kind of the line the path shelter systems are using these two now oh yeah so the shelter i run it requires two and um, if a tool in the backcountry has multiple uses then it's a really good tool yeah. and that's what we're all looking for is things that have multiple uses so tracking trekking poles are life um i've used the crest stones and the is it lecky lecky yep and i've liked both I probably use these the most, um, but I'm a huge believer in trekking poles and I do bring two pairs. One pair is always in the truck. One pair is always in my pack. Let's talk about release aids. Uh, I use a handheld. This is a thumb barrel. It's a wise choice from Carter. 
Uh, this goes in my right pocket at all times. It doesn't go anywhere else. So I kind of always know where it is. But if you think about it, a lot of times you're sitting down, drinking water, grabbing a snack, calling from certain positions. Maybe you want to go glass over there, but you leave it. These can get left behind. And then what are you going to do if you don't have a release aid? Are you... You're, you're toast. You're toast. So I always have the clone to this release with all the same settings in my backpack. And I keep the loop on this one because if I end up with my backup one, it's the walk of shame. So I don't get to take this off. I'm, I'm down to my last one. I get this on my... And I don't really like this. Yeah. So it's kind of the walk of shame. But a little bit of a punishment. There. Punishment. Two is one. And I really believe that when it comes to handheld release aids. My priorities in life is faith, then family, then fitness, then maybe fiscal fitness, then elk hunting, then career. And, this, and that's my list. And my wife likes to hear from me. And this has changed my game because I am a solo elk hunter. I plan on going two weeks this year solo. And this is going to help me stay in touch with my loved ones, have a safety net in case I make any mistakes, which I have in the past. And um, like just I've stabbed myself with knives and stuff like that and bled and needed surgery and stitches. I mean, I've had some accidents in the backcountry. Uh, this is also a safety net for other people I run into. If they're into trouble, I can help them get you know a message out or SOS. Also, when you kill something, you can potentially have a packer lined up and drop them. If you made arrangements before, um, that they can get right to your meat and you can get that meat out. A lot of you guys are hunting deeper and deeper in the backcountry and you forget to to consider, can I get that actual meat out? You maybe get the animal killed, but how are you going to get the meat out? Yeah. September, August, September is really hot out west. It seems like it's not getting cooler. It's trending warmer and warmer, and we're out there to get meat in the freezer. So meat care, this is a lifesaver for me. I like the mini, the regular. Yeah. Uh, it's too big and bulky. This Bluetooth to my phone. I never touch this thing. I just turn it on, use my phone. Um, it's not the fastest thing. Don't you're not. It's not like SMS yeah. know iPhone. How, know how to work it if you're using. Please it. practice before you leave. This was. I, I took this out for the first time this year, and I'll tell you that the biggest difference was peace of mind. I mean, I'd never taken one out before because a lot of the hunting I do is is day hunting or multi, just a couple days sure. where I'm like, hey, I can get away with this. I know the terrain I'm going into, but the fact is, you don't know what's going to happen. Yeah. Things can go wrong, and when they go wrong, you need to be prepared. So this is huge. And again, I love being in contact with my wife. So there's a huge bump there too. Yeah. It's just a good way to feel better and have communication. Really. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, lastly is kind of a kill kit system. Like uh, I talked about this earlier in the video, but kind of going out with the intentions of actually harvesting, mm -hmm. killing, eating your food, go getting grocery shopping to me means not just bow hiking. Always have game bags always in the bottom of my bag. When I was younger, I didn't always have game bags. I thought I would just maybe, I don't know what I was thinking, honestly, like <laughs> gut the animal out and hurry back to the truck. Just a waste of time and energy. So get yourself really good synthetic game bags that breathe well. These are from Black Ovis. And I just tested these out this year, this last year in Arizona. Loved them. I like the color, the red. Yep. So once you wash them, they don't just look nasty. It's my favorite thing about Not them. Not that that I mean, it, it does, it matters, the thing. They, they reflect really well in the light, so when you pack, I like to pack animals out in the night. It's cooler, and other hunters won't see that you got where you got one. Think about that, I mean, that's a, that's a pro tip. Um, they shine, they reflect, you can see them in the dark when you get your headlight hitting them, pack your animals out. Always carry these in my kill kit also, besides those game bags. This little overlooked thing is awesome for you solo elk hunters. This is from Base Camp. It's basically just a pad, but it's like a like a little mini tarp. You could use Tyvek, sure. You could use uh, a garbage bag, or you could yeah. use a contractor bag, but I like this, because it's designed to do what it does. So I open this up, and I lay it out up against, let's say, an elk. The elk quarter's pretty big, and I'm usually by myself. The last thing I want is to be trying to get that leg off and have it come off, and I lose you know, sloppy, wet meat, and it hits the ground. I mean, at my, house, at my household, I was raised to not get any dirt on your meat. Like that's the most precious commodity. Make sure that you take care. So this is always ensured that my meat doesn't get dirty. I can kind of inch it there. And then as I'm breaking down the animal, I can start stacking up the quarters on there to pack out. I prefer to pack out quarters with meat on the bone because I like meat to hang for 
10 to 14 days in a cooler. That's not always the case. You may need to get them deboned right away. And, and there's plenty of times where that has happened. So in case that does, I carry two different knives. These are buck knives, but any type of knife manufacturer should make a deboning knife, like a bone knife. Uh, you, you're gonna want at least five inches and the blade angle needs to be such that it's not super thick on top, but that it can definitely run along the bone. Mm -hmm. And so you make really precise cuts. Um, when we debone an elk hind quarter, it comes in a top round and a bottom round, and that's it. We keep all the meat connected so we save as much meat as possible. So you need to be really surgical on how you run this. This is life for me. I will not debone an animal without a knife like this. Before you get to the bone and the debone process, you need to skin it. So I always like a fixed skinner. I used to be um, kind of an advocate for those scalpel blades mm -hmm. until I put one about that, I buried it into my hand like that. I was on my last piece, I was in Wyoming, I was solo, it was about two in the morning. I was literally on my last back strap. I'd had everything off and I just slipped and buried it in there. And I remember leaving it in there for a hot minute going, what if I should leave that in or pull it out? And then I finally decided I'd just pull it out and I did, compressed it with a game bag, left all my stuff, went to town, got it taken care of. But at that point in time, I promised my family that I would not use scalpel blades anymore. They do break easy. They're extremely sharp. I do see the benefits, but you have to be careful. And I think you need to personally do a risk versus benefit analysis on that. Um, especially with me, I have back-to-back -back hunts. I missed five days of my next hunt waiting for my hand to heal. So I like a dedicated skinner. This is um, a skinner from Buck Knives. But Two different knives I like, uh, style of knives I like to have in my kill kit. Some guys don't want to carry two knives, and, and that's okay. Yep. Uh, this last piece is something that's kind of new to me. It's definitely on my overlooked list because I didn't have one until a few weeks ago, but this is a meat hook. You just pop it out. It's collapsible. Slap the O-ring over. And when you are butchering uh -huh. an elk quarter and maybe even deboning, and you have a big chunk of meat that feels like it's wanting to fall off and hit the ground, you can hook into the meat, okay. hold your meat, and let gravity kind of bring it down as you finish your cuts, and then it's on the hook. You walk over, you're by yourself, you open your game bag, get it in there, drop it. This thing has is the way to prevent meat from getting dropped, especially for solo hunters. I would say this is not a must, it's more of a should, and the should people, it's kind of if you solo elk hunt or bigger game animals by yourself and you're gonna be breaking them down. Also, this comes in really handy when you deer hunt mm -hmm. and you have a deer actually hanging in your garage and you're gonna take the debone it. This comes in really handy for deboning and pulling the meat off. So actual meat hook like a butcher, just find an ultralight one. You can see here that a lot of these items, they're not really items that are gonna, ha gonna help you cut ounces but they're gonna make your hunt a lot more enjoyable and a lot more efficient. Yep. So definitely things to consider. If you have items you wanna to add to this list, let us know in the comments below. Give us a call, we'd love to hear from you. Thanks for watching.